The 1937 Fox Vault Fire was a major fire in a 20th century Fox film storage facility in Little Ferry, New Jersey on the 9th of July 1937. It was caused by the spontaneous combustion of nitrate film stored in inadequately ventilated vaults. The fire resulted in one death and two injuries and destroyed all of the film present. This fire was responsible for the loss of most of the silent films produced by the Fox Film Corporation before 1932. Also destroyed were educational pictures, negatives, and films of several other studios. It brought attention to the potential for decaying nitrate film to spontaneously ignite and changed the focus of film preservation efforts to include a greater focus on fire safety. Quick facts about the 1937 Fox Fa Vault Fire. Uh, shown is a map of the area involved in the fire. Date, 9th of July, 1937. Location, Little Ferry, New Jersey. Cause, Nitrate Film Fire. Outcome, Destruction of Archived Fox Film Corporation and Educational Pictures, Silent Films. One death, two non-fatal injuries. Background Nitrate Film The early motion picture industry primarily used nitrocellulose film stock, commonly called nitrate film. This film is flammable and produces its own oxygen supply as it burns. Nitrate fires burn rapidly and cannot typically be extinguished, uh, capable of burning even underwater. Additionally, nitrocellulose is subject to thermal decom decomposition and hydrolysis, breaking down over time in the presence of high temperatures and moisture. This decaying film stock releases nitrogen oxides that themselves contribute to the de decay and make the damaged film burn more easily. Under the right conditions, nitrate film can even spontaneously combust. In part of uh, substantial in part because of substantial variability in the manufacturing of early film, there is considerable uncertainty about the circumstances necessary for self-ignition. Sustained temperatures of 106 degrees Fahrenheit, 41 degrees Celsius or higher, large quantities of nitrate film, increased humidity, poor ventilation, and aged or decaying film have all been considered risk factors. Most such fires in film archives have taken place in heat waves during summer months in closed facilities with limited ventilation, compounding several of these variables. Especially in confined areas, such fires can result in explosions. Large and dangerous fires sometimes resulted. On the 4th of May, 1897, one of the first major fires involving nitrate film began when a Lumiere projector caught fire at the Bazaar de la Charte in Paris. The resulting blaze caused 180 deaths. In the United States, a series of fires occurred at industry facilities. The Lubin Manufacturing Company's vault in Philadelphia exploded on the 13th of June, 1914, followed on the 9th of December by a fire that destroyed Thomas's, Thomas Edison's laboratory complex in West Orange, New Jersey. The New York studio of the famous Players Film Company burned in September 1915, in July 1920, the shipping facility of its corporate successor, Famous Players Lasky, was destroyed by a fire in Kansas City, Missouri, despite construction intended to minimize that risk. The United Film Ad Service vault, also in Kansas City, burned on the 4th of August 1928, and a fire was reported at Pathé Exchange nine days later. In October 1929, the Consolidated Film Industries facility was badly damaged by a nitrate fire. Spontaneous combustion was not proven to have occurred in any of these fires. It was possible that the potential of nitrate film to self-ignite was not even recognized before 1933. A footnote references that the West Orange uh, facility of Edison is now the site of Thomas Edison National Historic Park.
Little Fairy. When Little Fairy, New Jersey contractor William Fairs was hired to construct a film storage facility in 1934, he designed the structure to be fireproof. The building had 12-inch, 30-centimeter outer walls and a reinforced concrete roof. Internally, it was divided into 42 individual vaults, each enclosed behind a steel door and separated with 8-inch, 20-centimeter brick interior walls. The local fire department confirmed fire's fireproofing. Despite the potential for fire, the facility was located in a residential neighborhood and was equipped with neither a fire sprinkler system nor a mechanical ventilation. Film processing company Deluxe Laboratories owned the building and rented it to 20th Century Fox to store the silent films acquired from the Fox Film Corporation during the merger. Fire a photo shows damage to 361 Main, the residence closest to the vaults, with 375 Main in the background. Northern New Jersey experienced a heat wave in July 1937, with daytime temperatures of 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 degrees Celsius, and warm nights. The sustained heat contributed to nitrate decomposition in the film vaults, and the building's ventilation was inadequate to prevent a dangerous buildup of gases. At some time shortly after 2 a.m. on the 9th, spontaneous ignition occurred in the vault at the building's northwest corner. Local truck driver Robert Davison observed flames coming from one of the structure's window vents and within five minutes used a municipal fire alarm call box to report the fire. Davison then attempted to awaken residents of the surrounding houses, many of whom were already alerted to the situation by the noise and intense heat. As decomposition gases in additional vaults ignited, bursts of fire shot over 100 feet, 30 meters, horizontally across the ground from the windows, and a similar distance into the air from the building's roof vents. Anna Greaves and her two sons, John and Charles, were caught in one such sheet of flame while attempting to flee the area. All three were seriously burned. Thirteen-year-old Charles eventually died from his injuries on the 19th of July. Other area families were able to escape unharmed as the fire spread to five neighboring residences and destroyed two vehicles. Little Ferry firefighters first arrived at 2.26 a.m., followed by additional companies from Hawthorne, Bridgefield Park, River Edge, and South Hackensack. Despite 150 men employing 14 hose streams, the fire was not extinguished until 5.30 a.m. Property damage was estimated at $150,000 to $250,000. All of the film in the facility was destroyed, over 40,000 reels of negatives and film prints burned to ashes inside their film cans. 57 truckloads of burned film were hauled from the site to have their silver content extracted. Each can contained about five cents worth of silver. The salvaged metal returned $2,000. A footnote uh, mentions that the current value of the damage is approximately $2.47 million to $3.29 million in 2016 dollars. Legacy. A photo shows after the fire piles of film cans awaiting removal for their silver reclamation. Although 20th Century Fox officials at the time remarked that only old films were destroyed, the 1937 Fox fi Vault fire is now understood as a significant loss of American film heritage. Film historian Anthony Slide called the destruction of the Fox Film Corporation vault the most tragic American nitrate fire. The highest quality examples of every Fox film produced prior to 1932 were destroyed. Although copies located elsewhere allowed some of these films to survive, mostly as lower quality prints or mere fragments of film, over 75% of Fox's feature films before 1930 are completely lost. The Little Fairy Vaults also held works uh, by other film studios which had contracted with Fox for distribution. Educational Pictures 
had over 2,000 negatives and prints destroyed, including negatives of Buster Keaton's silent films with the company. Also present was the original negative of D.W. Griffith's Way Down East, which Fox had purchased with the intent of remaking, the negative for the controversial Christie Productions-sponsored film The Birth of a Baby, and films by smaller studios such as Atherton Productions, Pex Bad Boy Corporation, Principal Pictures, and Serial Producing. Archival material intended for the Museum of Modern Art's film library was lost as well. The destruction of the Little Fairy facility spurred an interest in fire safety as an aspect of film preservation. Unlike previous film nitrate film fires, the spontaneous combustion of decomposing film stock was determined to be responsible. Investigators suggested that older nitrocellulose film stored in the archive was of lower quality than then current film and thus more prone to instability. The Society of Motion Picture Engineers Committee on the Preservation of Film three months after the fault fire called, quote, recent and rather extensive film fires, end quote, as evidence that existing preservation efforts had failed to adequately address the, quote, fire problem, end quote. More heavily reinforced film vaults were suggested to prevent fires in a single vault from destroying entire archival facilities. Film storage cabinets with ventilation and cooling systems were also proposed, as was further research into improving the quality of cellulose acetate film to encourage its use as a safer replacement for nitrate film. A footnote lists that the uh, $2016 uh, inflated value of the silver was 32900 See also 1967 MGM Vault Fire, Lists of lost films, list of incomplete or partially lost films, list of rediscovered films. References include Heather Heckman's 2010 article, Burn After Viewing or Fire in the Vaults, Nitrate Decomposition and Combustibility, Combustibility in the journal American Archivist. The article Nitrate Film Testing for the National Archives, December 1978 Fire Investigation by the Naval Ordnance Station at Indian Head, Maryland. The Weekly Underwriter, Fire and Water Engineering. The website of Thomas Edison National Historic Park. The Nitrate uh, journal Film History article, The Legion of the Condemned, Why American Silent Films Perished. The article, Fox Film Storage Fire, in the journal Quarterly of the National Fire Protection Agency, 1937. The Bergen Evening Record, as reprinted by Richard Kosiarski's Fort Lee Film Town, uh, 1904 to 2004, published in 2005. The Film Daily in 1941. The Film Daily in 1937. Motion Picture Herald in 1938. Motion Picture Herald in 1940. The Journal of the Society of Motion Picture Engineers, 1938. Bibliography. Richard Kosiarski, 2005, Fort Lee, The Film Town, 1904-2004, Univers Indiana University Press, ISPN 978-0-86196-652-3. Rachel Maines, 2013, Asbestos and Fire, Technological Trade-Offs and the Body at Risk, Rutgers University Press, ISBN 978-0-8135-6472-2. James L. Nebar, 2010, The Fall of Buster Keaton, his films for MGM, Educational Pictures in Columbia, 
published by Scarecrow Press, ISBN 978-0-8108-7682-8. Anthony Slide, 2000, Nitroid Won't Wait, A History of Film Preservation in the United States, published by McFarland, ISBN 978-0-7864-0836-8. Aubrey Solomon, 2010, The Fox Film Corporation, 1915-1935, A History and Filmography, published by McFarland and Company, ISBN 978 hyphen zero hyphen seven eight six four hyphen six two eight six hyphen five